And we'll now continue with the rest of the assembly and invite CEO Oscar Robles to take the floor. Thank, Thank you very much. Can I have my presentation, please, on the screen? This summarizes the activities for 2021, but also contains some updates in some of the graphs on relevant issues. So you will see a small logo of LACNIC 37 stating that this information is not as at December last year, but has been updated to more recent dates. So let us start as Alejandro was saying last year, we finished the strategic planning process for the exercise of strategic definition. This is done every three, four, or five years, depending on the context. If we see that there are sufficient conditions that imply updating, this is what we do. I won't go into the details. This has not changed significantly because we continue being a regional IP addresses organization and of number resources. But there are some issues on which we have identified things that more attention should be provided to in the coming years. So this is a strategic plan for 2025. We simplified some of the drafting as the vision when we say that we build a regional community for a better global internet. Uh, we, it's different from what we had uh, in the past, but we are fully convinced that it, not only do we have uh, to uh, implement a registry, but the process, for instance, where we, what we are doing in this event, where we approach different groups, initiatives, and interests to continue um, with this effort, working for the internet in the region, but also to strengthen our own processes. If we only had a public policy forum as the one that was just concluded, the uh, people's participation might not be so uh, enthusiastic. Some people might not come because they may not be too interested. They may not find that the topics are uh, relevant. So that's a significant thing. But we continue to be a registry. That is, we are still aware that we have a basic function, a basic role, and that is why we put that as the first uh, column, the registry and the quality of the registry that we give you, but also strengthening our infrastructure that uh, provides uh, you with the services. However, in this period, we identified an additional strategy. That is, we based on some surveys that we conduct with the members and uh, based on talks, and uh, probes, um, um, we identified that members were interested in having more studies, such as the ones that we had produced in 2020. In 2020, during the pandemic, some of the resources that were available for the events remained unused. Uh, so we started to think uh, what we could, could do to continue to meet our objectives even when we wouldn't have in-person events. And we conducted a number of uh, studies and diagnoses that we shared and were well received. That is why we uh, decided that that was an interesting thing that was uh, appreciated by the extended community and our members, the rest of the details to They contribute to um, a sounder um, and more flexible strategic plan. I already talked about this at previous presentations. The format is different. These are our four perspectives uh, that lead our operations. In orange, on top, it, that's of the members and extended community. That's our. That's the reason why we do everything as uh, you see at the bottom of the chart. The red hexagons are all those strategies or strategic objectives that are process-oriented and that we need to fulfill our 
um, to achieve what we need for the members. In yellow is the, what we have to solve these years, and what are the goals that we have to make sure that we um, complete these processes to achieve our objectives. And at the bottom, we have the organizational resilience, especially considering financial issues, but there we also include risk management. So it's not, as Alejandro said at the beginning, we are no longer speaking of a 20, uh, of the organization 20 years ago where we didn't have an operational capital or a community capital that was as significant as today's. Today, every step we give requires being more careful because we are not the young Lacanic that where we could dare do many more things. Today, we have to be very cautious and we have to be constantly um, surveying uh, the uh, surroundings and contemplate risks. Here I have some of the most relevant. Uh, this presentation will be available um, under the uh, assembly um, um, with the assembly documents, uh, but I emphasize some of the initiatives we have. We've always been interested in promoting the deployment of IPv6 with a number of initiatives and projects, events, and so on. We are trying uh, we are aiming at IPv6 only, that is how to deliver information, uh, documentation, knowledge for those ready or interested in operating IPv6 only networks. This is a long haul project and the first thing that you're going to see these first months is just information of what's working today in IPv6 to start uh, identifying what is already running in uh, uh, IPv6, and then we'll see what is not running in IPv6. And that's why, for instance, um, uh, the uh, modems, uh, the EPs uh, may, and uh, the terminals may, uh, um, with the end users, may be the um, ones that are uh, running behind. So let me tell you some of the activities that uh, we organized in 2021. First, with the members. What did we do for the members and for the community? First of all, as you are aware, in 2020, on August uh, the 19th, finally, we had the final depletion of IPv4 for our members, and from then on, we started redirecting rejecting requests because we had run out of IP before. Of course, we continue, continually uh, recover space and we can assign again. So instead of rejecting requests and canceling them, what we typically do is we have a waiting list. And that is coordinated by two um, uh, uh, NIRSA, uh, Mexico and Brazil. and. Uh, uh, so that uh, we can manage IPv4 resources after the depletion. Here you see the amount of rec the number of pending requests, close to 1,000 requests. That's dangerous. Well, nothing will happen. They'll just have to wait for a long time. Today, they have to wait over 400 days. Uh, it goes up and down, but. Uh, what the, those that join here in this waiting list, we estimate that they won't get resources until uh, three years' time. If anybody's interested in knowing how they can obtain IPv4 space tomorrow in the session with our regional ISPs, I'm going to give a talk uh, describing some existing alternatives to obtain IPv4 space, and we can discuss this further. That's one of the issues. So it was uh, 2021 was also key for the implementation of policies. Actually, we implemented three policies that are highly complex from the operational point of view. And it took us time, not just because of the complexity of the implementation, but also because of the effects that the policies could have. The effects are uh, two of these that would t uh, led to uh, revoking, um, so and that was a delicate issue. For instance, one of them that was validating abuse contacts. Uh, you see, uh, well, we that enabled us to validate the, the existence of that contact in each of the members, and today we have 
over 95% of contacts validated. That's a positive thing. And it also speaks of the quality of uh, the information that we have in the database. And this is updated. And that is why you have that logo, LACNIC 37. This is not um, December last year. In addition, last year, we concluded the investigation of a couple of cases that we had seen. One was a complaint of somebody in the community, and another one was the one that we, a case that we identified. We, it had been identified in the past, but we were just waiting for a trigger. When they tried to make a transfer, we already suspected that the resources had not been requested legitimately, um, uh, legitimately but uh, we didn't have uh, any grounds uh, to so but we froze the transfer until they could give proof of the adequate uh, justification and uh, that it corresponded to that transfer but um, they couldn't give evidence of any of the two so we completed the uh, revoke uh, revocation so we these were 13,000 addresses of IPv4, so we, with that, we could satisfy 50 requests. And the other one in Belize, in this case, uh, the assumption or the complaint was not confirmed, and finally, we concluded that the holder could uh, preserve the resources, so we um, reported reported that to the person that had filed the complaint complaint and but actually it was uh, an exception of the policy that was described when the policy was presented in 2006 this was a very specific case very strange but it was real the number of requests per quarter this continues to increase it might not be so obvious because the last two quarters uh, uh, you don't see it but notice that this peak is the moment prior to the the, the um, depletion of IPv4, so that's disruptive. But even with that peak, if we look at 2021 and we compare it versus 2020, where uh, prior to the depletion, there's a 9% uh, increase as compared to 2020 of operation of requests. Another important activity that we have had in the transfers. Here you have some data, some of the countries that have transferred more resources. Other resources are to your right. And the number of transfers total uh, are to your left. And you, in addition, you can see this orange bar. It's almost the same number of transfers that we had because of mergers and acquisitions just uh, for the sake of comparison, as a reference. However, we uh, believe that many of these transfers were prior to the transfer process based on inter or intra rare transfers. You see that there's an increase of the transfers very slowly, steadily. The transfers uh, increase both outbound and inbound. There are no no, no, nothing is indicating that there's a trend for resources to leave or to come in, but there's a balance. There's mostly there's a balance. And uh, first, uh, now and then you have uh, unbalances and then it gets balanced again. So, and uh, the services that we provide uh, are adequate to the members, and this is reflected uh, by the. Uh, satisfaction surveys and this is something that we measure um, in odd years um, in, uh, in in odd years we don't uh, um, the surveys are not uh, very complete uh, and but in uh, even years yes we um, in 2021 we uh, when you receive the IP uh, spaces or when you pay a transfer or when you enable the ROA, uh, that is at key moments to determine how happy you are with the services. And as you can appreciate, the levels 
are excellent, always above 95%. If you add dark green and, and bright green, these are the two first uh, responses possible that we uh, suggest uh, for the people who answer. As an additional element for our community, we offer services for institutional life. And a key element of that is the elections. So for this purpose, I call the Electoral Commission to give their brief report and to tell us about the election processes that took place in 2021. Come on. Good afternoon. As Oscar said, we are the members of the Electoral Commission. Let me introduce my colleagues, Nancy Cordova from Peru, Horacio Tedesco from Argentina, and Marcelo Corradini from Brazil. We also have our colleague, Carolina Cofre from Chile, who for personal reasons could not make it, and uh, Vivian Valverde, from Costa Rica. Our role in the Electoral Commission is to audit and certify all the processes, both statute bylaws processes, not these are the board, the fiscal commission, and and then we have the AS PDP, ASO, AC, and NROAC. These are the non bylaws functions. This cover, the mandate is a three year period during this process for 2021, for example. In the case of the Electoral Commission, we received 13 candidates to cover two positions. 1,290 organizations voted. This represents 12% of the total number of entities authorized to vote. In the case of the Fiscal Commission, two candidates were submitted to cover one position. 1,332 organizations voted 12% of the total of entities that have a right to vote. We also had electoral processes for the board. In this case, 12 candidates were presented to cover three positions. 2,037 organizations voted which represent 18% of the total number of entities that were authorized to vote. This is a summary of our activities as the commission. As we are saying, we review the nominations, we audit the votes and certify the results. This is for the year 2021. During these months, we followed the different stages of the elections process. In addition to that, we made suggestions for improvement in the election process, and these are some of the changes that we will be hearing about. So the staff then analyzes these suggestions and are then submitted to the board. We'll be hearing more about that later on. Thank you very much. Thank you. We thank you for your presentation, but also the time you dedicate. As you have seen, the number of candidates has increased, and this is very good. This reflects the interest that the community has in our processes, and they have managed to respond to that need in, a quite, in quite an effective way. Thank you very much for your support. So let us continue now. I will now be sharing with you some slides 
regarding the actions we carry out with the community. I will be skipping these because Laura Kaplan already presented these during the assembly. I will only stress this one here. This is LACNIC campus. So that you see the number of participants we have in this initiative. There are about 7,000 participants who took part in the different courses, 6,000 on topics related to IPv6. So I really like to encourage you to continue participating. Invite people's in your, people in your organizations to take advantage of this tool. This is free of charge for all of you. Please take advantage of this option which will help us in increasing the technical skills of the community. The webinars, Laura also referred to these activities. Please address Laura Kaplan or Carlos Martinez if you need options for support. The case of Frida, like Laura explained yesterday morning. So let us go on. As part of the comments we heard about the positive reception of these studies and that we carried out in 2020, we reproduced some of these, we maintained some of these, or even expanded them, or we also carried out some additional studies, both with member entities or friend entities, or new ones, like IX, for example, RIPE, for the RIPE Atlas project, and some of the IXPs from the region. Likewise, during 2021, we developed, or rather during 2020 and 2021, we conducted a study together with the APNIC. We sought to identify those factors, those success factors that had been established in the original design of the internet. What we identified was that many of these are still present to a large extent. And also this then gave rise to identifying the success that have to do with these technical factors. And one of the outputs was a talk we had with Vince Serve in LACNIC 36 in one of the sessions. And in yesterday's opening session, too. So the idea is to be aware of all these decisions that have had such a major impact on the development of the Internet. You can check this study if you click on the image. You can download it if you wish to study it or analyze, analyze it. IP deployment of IPv6 deployment in the region continues to take place. It doesn't depend wholly on us, but we are sure that we can have a positive impact on the deployment of IPv6. And we're satisfied with the deployment, which is about 30%. Now, the problem is that this percentage not necessarily is applied to all the territories and countries of the region and not even to all the operators. So this is an effort that has to be maintained. Also, in the case of the deployment of RPKI, we have we see that there has been an increase. Today, it's more than 40 percent of ASMs who have been identified during this monitoring. This is t as uh, today, not as at December. As you are aware, in 2020, we finished the deployment of the Internet Routing Registry. This was a pending issue for many years. We finally were able to conclude it successfully. And having the tool is the initial stage, but not the final uh, one. In 2021, we s signed an agreement with RADB, which is the most well-known IRR so that they could replicate our information. The next steps have to do with processes and infrastructure. Don't despair, this will be shorter, but these are nevertheless important. As usual, we establish ongoing improvement in most of our processes, but also on the infrastructure trying to have redundancy and processes that can ensure that we can guarantee 
provide guarantee with all our devices and also with fire extinguishing devices in all the data centers. We have three data centers at present, external ones. One is in Sao Paulo, there are two in Uruguay, and one internal one. So the idea is that this is maintained secure. I was also telling you that 2021 was a key year regarding the implementation of policies. I think we already commented on this. We already referred to those that have been had implemented. Yes, there was a graph on that, so I will skip this for the sake of time. Regarding our processes, more than the certification, what we sought is to have repeatable processes. If we have any doubts, we have to be sure about what we have to do in accordance with a procedure. If there is a rotation or if we want to promote a person, this should not be left to the creativity of the person who is, comes afterwards, but this should ensure what is relevant for the process, for the client, or for the operation. This certification we have maintained for many years now. Last year was no exception. Regarding the efforts we had with the communications area has always been a challenge. Virtuality even enhanced this further. Now we are competing with many communications initiative, initiatives of online events and webinars. Although we already did that intensively, now everyone w went over to doing it. So competing with all those initiatives posed an additional challenge. So with LinkedIn, we tried to seek other ways of communication, and we're now experimenting with an additional canal, which is a podcast. But any comments you can make will be most welcome. You can look up the podcast in Podcast Last Lacknick in Spotify, and you will find it there. Regarding human capital in 2022, well, we had professionals from nine countries, so the same diversity in terms of country is compared to 2021. Throughout 2021, this remained the same. These are Argentina, Brazil, Cuba, Spain, Mexico, Panama, Peru, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, in addition to Uruguay. So there are 10 countries. 16% of, the, 16 of the staff is doing home office in seven countries. The pandemic led to work from home. The average uh, history in the country is 6.3 years. Majority is women, 53%, and the average age is under 30, under 40 years of age. These are some of the ideas that we had to implement in order to maintain productivity, motivation, and also mental and physical health of our collaborators to ensure compliance with our objectives. I won't go into the details. I'm sure that many of you had to do similar things or even more significant things to maintain the operations of your own organizations. As you are aware, we would like to have a good organizational climate in the organization. This was an out uh, we had outstanding uh, evaluations as a great place to work. We ranked 93% for third consecutive year. And this year, once again, we ranked for the 10th year, so the 10th consecutive year as a great place to work. Finally, as I said, we were focused on organizational resilience. This has to do with the way we cater for the different challenges in the organization and also in the environment. This graph shows how our risk management has evolved. The status in 2020, the status in 2021. You will note that the number of risks decreases slightly. And although they will never disappear, those in the red zone, well, the idea is to visualize these, but this has to do with trying to eliminate the risk or manage the risk ultimately. So that is the important thing, to take into account all these 
options. So we have been able to organize events that despite all the uncertainties you come across, these can be successful as expressed by you. When you do the feed, provide the feedback of the event, we are aware that this was successful. We suspect that this event will also be successful, but we have to wait for your feedback survey. So far, my report for 2021. If you wish to have more details, you can read the annual report contained in the transparency section. There you have the annual reports of all the previous years. You can compare these. You can see how much we have aged as a executive but you can consult all this information. So what we'll do now is go over to the financial information, and I'd like to